This is Steve. And this is Sean. Welcome to Acromedia's High Five. So Steve, what are we talking about today? Integrated web services with Drupal 8. Already integrated web services into Drupal 8. We're going to have a counter for how many times you can say integrated, even though I told you not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, but for real, the web services that are already integrated into Drupal 8 is what we're going to be talking about today. OK, yeah, and so what we mean by that is you already there was lots of support for web services in Drupal in Drupal seven and even some in Drupal six, um, but it was all modules. There was a services module um, and stuff that it came from, and now it's all core built into Drupal out of the box, um, and it's also been improved a lot um, going along with that. So uh, first of all, what a web service actually is. Um, so web service basically means a sort of technical service that we can connect to to get information from the Drupal website or push information to the Drupal website. So it's something meant to be used um, not by a person necessarily, but by another system uh, that connects to Drupal. Um, and that could be you know, an inventory management system. That could be another blog you have that pushes content. That could be you know, uh, another website that aggregates content for you. It, it can be any other system that's going to connect to Drupal. It can be a payment gateway. It can be anything. You know. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's specifically done for when that other site is pushing data from or grabbing data from Drupal. So uh, Drupal is sort of the static and then something else is connecting to it. Um, and so Drupal supports these um, with a, uh, what's called a RESTful setup. Uh, that probably doesn't mean anything to most of you, but it's just the standard format um, for which to do that. It's the most popular format these days for sending data back and forth. And Drupal supports that for every piece of content it does. Anything that's a node, a, that's a user, so you know, blog posts, customers, views of data, anything you can do, you can request and get through Drupal, which is actually really cool. Um, when you're talking about uh, RESTful, that's, that's cross-platform. That's not actually really related to platform at all. Yeah, that's sort of the whole point, is it's, it's a generic spec that Drupal can say, okay, we support a RESTful implementation. And mm -hmm. so then anything else that knows RESTful goes, okay, I can connect to Drupal. Maybe I have to figure out exactly what data is Drupal sending me, but I know how it's sending me the data. Yeah. So the data is going to make sense to me. So being that it already has this set up or integrated, say, mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of using RESTful, like uh, what percentage or like is this like a super popular one? Are there... Is this like the most well-known one? It is. It is the most well-known and the most. I would say the most popular. It's the most popular currently. Like it's the new cool one or whatever to do. Mm -hmm. um, lots of stuff used to use SOAP or like an XML setup mm -hmm. uh, previously, but um, REST is definitely the most popular one sort of currently, and it's definitely gaining more and more momentum right now. Um, there is the ability within Drupal to add um, support for uh, other formats if you want to. Although REST is the one that they support out of the box. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that more or less means, you know, no further configuration or how, how much is actually set up? So a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you can set up the REST services and everything um, completely through the user interface. You don't have to do any programming. Um, I could do it. Yes, okay. actually. Uh, it's it. They have uh, specifically a like a whole RESTful UI, a services UI that they've set up. So you can basically go in and say, okay, I need to give access to nodes. Okay, here's the link it generates for how to give access to all my content nodes. Um, and then I want these accounts to get permission to it, and so you can give certain roles ability to use that um, all through the user interface. And then basically, if you had a a third party that you were working with that needed to hook up to your system, you'd just be like, hey, here are the endpoints. It's actually um, self-documenting as, as well. So you could basically sort of um, be like, hey, here's the stuff to connect to. They could connect to it. And it's basically going to provide the documentation <laughs> with it of like, here's what the data is going to look like. So we're giving you a title. Here's the parameters of the title. We're giving you a description. Here's the de parameters of a description. Here's how to get it. Here's what the data is going to look like, all that stuff. So if you're like a site owner and you need to pass this on to someone else uh, to do a technical implementation, you can do that yourself, actually. Sounds like we're working you out a job. I don't even need you anymore. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Please don't insult me anymore. What else is integrated? <sighs> I, I don't promise to not insult you. Um, uh, what they also use is they use a system called uh, HAL, which is a sort of add-on for JSON, which is basically these are, are ways that the data is formatted. Um, you don't need to know what these technical terms mean necessarily, but what it means is that um, from a layman's standpoint is you can link uh, data to other data. It's, it, that's very important uh, for websites, right? Is you go through links to series mm -hmm. of pages and stuff, all that everything connects to something else. Um, and so you can do the same thing with services now. So if someone requests 
um, a node from you, you can say, okay, you know, in that node, you can also be like, here's all the other uh, related products that are attached to it. And you can have those attached and they can follow those links through the web service and get all that data as well. So it's not just sort of like you have to know exactly what you're getting. Mm -hmm. It can also link you and be like, oh, also get this, but it does it not in a web link, but in a link through the services. So they know what services to call. So it lets you um, through a service, you can kind of discover all the content on the site like you would if you were browsing it versus having to know exactly what you need. Um, it, it's actually really cool from a services standpoint. And that's quite new, so people haven't even figured out all the sort of uses for that. But it lets you do a lot more where you just sort of provide these services and then mm -hmm. people can themselves, when connecting to it, figure out exactly how they want to deal with the data. And you don't have to just, each time they come up with a new idea, you don't have to change how you serve the data. You've already served everything and they can do it all on their end. And I'm using the actual you know, UI that's been set up for RESTful within Drupal, is that correct? Yes. Um, you, you literally just have to basically like turn the checkbox on, mm -hmm. or even you can have uh, the service putting the data in multiple ways. So you can have a plain JSON setup, and you can have a JSON with this HAL linking setup, and the user requesting it to you can just request the different version. So it can be basically transparent to you. You just set up the service, and which format they request it in, it's up to them requesting it. And it's just available in any of the formats that Drupal supports for you. Being that this is set up, you know, um, how, how much more you know, efficient does this actually make development in terms of hooking up two systems um like is this a huge we, if improvement we have to or? hook with someone else yeah it doesn't help if someone else is hooking with us it's a big improvement okay um, because a lot of it hopefully is literally just turn some check boxes on it works and you just send them an email like hey here's the info away it goes and you're done like it could mm -hmm. honestly take you a half an hour um if you have to uh, provide data for some stuff that doesn't have services, like you've built some more custom stuff and mm -hmm. so you want to provide data, you might still have to do some programming to build additional services. Once okay. you've built them, they can be turned on and off and modified through the user interface, but if they don't exist at all um, and they're not something you can just configure within the interface, there's still work you have to build them. But it, it should reduce quite a lot of effort. And it, it gives you that advantage of it's, it's not something you have to have programmed and set up. If someone's just like, hey, like I need your data, can I connect to your API? You can go, okay, and you just turn it on, right? You don't have to be like, oh, we don't have an API. I don't know how it's set up. We don't have a guy for that or whatever. You can just do that. So it's always there available, you know, if, if the opportunity presents itself um, instead of just being like, no, we don't have an API. I'm sorry, we can't do that. What else should we kind of talk about in terms of web services that are already, you know, present in Drupal 8? Is there anything else um, that we're missing? We, we didn't talk, we only kind of touched on it, but um, this comes with authentication uh, built into it. Um, it just uses HTTP authentication by default, but you can mm -hmm. attach on OAuth and other means of authentication. I um, mean, that's going to hook right in with the Drupal accounts. So you can just turn on these permissions for someone's Drupal account, and then it works for the web service as well. And you manage the permissions and everything just like you would manage their permissions for anything else um, outside. Like, can they edit this you know, um, blog post? Well, you can say, OK, they can edit it normally, and they can also edit it through the API. Hmm. Um, and so it's just, it's, just, it's just literally another set of checkboxes in the same permission thing. It's very straightforward. So. And, it, and it does the same, you know, can you view it? Can you edit it? Can you delete it? It has the, all the same type of permissions that you have for regular Drupal content. Okay. Does that pretty much sum up web services that are integrated into Drupal 8? <laughs> yeah, um, I touched on it briefly. The one more thing maybe I'd say is um, views, since they're in Drupal core now, mm -hmm. um, are also can be fully exposed through services. So not just the raw content, but displays of it through views. So like if you want to, here's my listing of my 10 most recent articles, here's my top products, here's my related products. If you build a view, which quite a few site admins and stuff are familiar with building sort of just for listing and displaying content, you can basically just make a version of that view that is a web service. And so it's kind of a way to build your own web services. And then you just go like make as RESTful service, mm -hmm. you know, go, it makes an endpoint for you. You can pass it off to everyone else. So you can it's use that cool. to power quite a bit. So, so not put me out of a job, but hopefully getting rid of some of it. Yeah, but, so. uh, but ultimately making, putting a little bit more control into the admin's hands and, and getting it so they, they don't always need technical support for everything. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, like before this, it would have been like, I need any sort of web service. It's like, go to your development company or go to your develop in-house developers and they have to build it. And then they probably have to come up with a spec and they have to mm -hmm. agree on it back and forth. Whereas this, you can just turn it on. It's, it's already provided. All that stuff's been sorted out. It should work pretty well with pretty much any data type, um, any field type that works in Drupal. They've done a lot of work to make sure that's all matching together and it uses a bunch of sort of globally decided upon international standards. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to our summary? No, I think that's good. Okay. That's well, thanks for uh, watching, guys. If you want to subscribe, please do so. If you have any questions or comments about uh, RESTful or anything to do with the web services that come with Drupal 8, 
please do so below. If you wanted to just, you know, tweet us the word integrated over and over, that's also fine. I think um, I got it like eight or ten times. Yeah. I, I was actually like, I thought you'd get it more. But <laughs> anyways, uh, follow us on Facebook, please. Uh, read our blog at acromedia.com and follow me on Twitter. Sean also broke his finger. You can ask him about that. Please don't. Thank you.